What is up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Booyah Man 85 Well, <clears throat> finally, we can actually Bloke, man. Welcome finish to the space shuttle mission. Play this log in silly game. Control, then you may start the mission at any time. Good luck. Okay, so, long story short, I lost this disc for this game for like three months. Which explains why I haven't uploaded a video in a while. So... Yeah, I just found it. Uh, I was going to start recording last week on Kerbal Space Program, but then I found the disc, and I was like, eh, okay, might as well finish this game first before I transition you guys over there. <coughs> but anyway, so today, finally, Mission 3, STS-41C, carried out by... Challenger on April 6th, 1984. Primary payload was the Long Duration Exposure Facility containing 57 scientific applications and experiments that will be put into Earth orbit for a period of almost a year. A spectacular repair effort by two astronauts will also be pre 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 bleh, performed on the Solar Max. This is the Solar Max repair mission. Uh, planned landing scrubbed at uh, Kennedy Space Center. And the mission extended for one revolution to facilitate the landing at Edwards. First mission to utilize the direct uh, orbit insertion, which eliminates the use of the first OMS burn. <clears throat> so basically, it's uh, the new direct orbital rendezvous maneuver. Uh, crew Commander uh, Bob Crippen, Pilot Francis Scobie. Mission Specialist 1, George Nelson. Mission Specialist 2, James Van Hoffen. Mission Specialist 3, Terry Hart. Launch Pad Complex 39A. 180 degree, uh, 280 nautical mile orbit. Inclination 28.5 degrees. 108 orbits. Duration. <coughs> 6 days, 23 hours, 41 minutes, 7 seconds. Landing at Edwards. Now, payload. Long duration exposure facility, DILF, will be placed in orbit with the RMS arm. Flight, or flight support systems will be used for the Solar Max satellite repairs, <coughs> which is basically the, uh, the loading platform we're going to put the, the satellite on to repair the satellite in the uh, cargo bay. Two external. Ex ex blah, 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 blah. Two extra vehicle activities uh, for the flight support stations will be used for the MFO egresses. Uh, manned maneuvering unit, yada yada yada. Uh, some kind of crazy device placed on the EVA hatch to grapple a satellite latch tether will be used for the Solar Max satellite. <coughs> Yada 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 yada. Full motion video capture program, whatever. This is the last time, ladies and gentlemen, I will be doing this. T minus one hour, 50 minutes to launch. This is the last time we're doing the pre launch checklist because that's an extra episode I don't have to make every freaking time. We just start one minute to go because it's so much easier. So. There's the orange tank that everybody loves to look at. Astronauts are ingressing, egressing through the crew, uh, the crew door. <sighs> now, I don't know if you guys have noticed, ha ha ha, if you've been watching, that, um, Let's see, hang on a second, I'm looking at something. Um, okay, there's one minute. Yada, 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 yada. Okay, there we go. Alright, so I'm just going to take a few minutes before I time warp to just talk, talk about a few things. So, before, when we do the RMS arm maneuvers and all that other shenanigans, I would usually minimize the program, go to the desktop, and check the grapple index cards for the grapple measurements for the RMS arm maneuvers, <clears throat> and 
And when I came back to the game, the game would black out and wouldn't record the video. I got all the audio, right? But it was just it would just be black. What I have done is I have moved the PDF files for all the checklists and index cards and information from the website onto my phone so I can PDF it on my phone. So I can just go through the checklists here on the phone. I don't have to worry about ever having to go back to the desktop for any reason. So, hopefully, that's how we're going to be doing that. So yeah, I've got the, uh, the checklist right here. And uh, because we're going to be doing this is the last time we'll be doing the pre-launch checklist, I'm going to go through all the details of the pre-launch checklist so that anybody who wants to keep doing pre-launch uh, can do it. To get the achievement uh, in the achievement screen for the mission, you have to complete the entire mission from T minus one minute to launch all the way through landing without stopping. I think that's adequate. I don't know if you can save and leave, but I do know you can't load a checkpoint. You have to complete the entire mission basically in one sitting uh, in order to get the achievement uh, mission patch on the achievement screen. So that that's where that is. So anyway, so First maneuver, astronauts are entering the shuttle. Go to T minus one hour, 40 minutes. Okay, F3. Activate the commander's communications. Overhead panel left. I believe it's up, where is it? No, oh, I'm an idiot. It's right there, David. <laughs> Moron. All right. Left audio. Switch it to Vox Vox. Uh, left audio AG one and two to TR. On everything, AG and intercom. And audio and tone. Challenger, this is off control. Do you read? Challenger, loud and clear. Over. Copy that. Challenger, out. Okay, then we're going to do the same thing on the uh, pilot side. That panel is actually that one right there. Commander's audio hatch. There's the Vox Vox switch. Now, this is a picture, it's not an actual representation of the position of these dials. So that's actually in Vox Vox, and all five of these switches are flipped up, and that one's flipped all the way up. So now, when we get the commander, we, when we get the next transmission, we're going to go to this one, and <clears throat> we're going to do the same thing. And that'll be 1 minute 35 seconds. Switch the pilot's communication to Vox Vox. Flip the AG, intercom, and AA switches all to TTR. TRR, sorry. And power to tone and audio. Power that. Out. Okay. Uh, where's the abort light? I believe it's that one. There it is. Okay. That switch right there. We're going to hold for that one. Stay awake, you stupid thing. Uh, T minus one hour, 20 minutes. So coming up in about a second. Challenger, press four. Aboard advisory jet. Over. See the, see the red Captain light? Challenger, we confirm. Okay. Uh, that's the board advisory check. T minus one hour, ten minutes. Flight control confirms with pilot that the side hatch is closed and locked. So we'll stand by for that. And that'll be in. Challenger, this is off control. Give me counter check. CDR. Roger. 
PLG. Copy that. MS1. Roger. MS2. Loud and clear. MS3. Loud and clear. And while they were confirming their uh, their communication with Houston Control, F4 will allow you to switch to the different seats for those particular astronaut positions. And that's where I confirmed where they were sitting <clears throat> because that's how you do that. Anyway, so, whoops, stop. I'm going to make people dizzy, keep doing this. Stop that. Um, <clears throat> we're still waiting for uh, one hour... One hour, one hour, ten minutes. Challenger, this is on control. Side hatch is secure. Challenger, copy that. Okay. <clears throat> Next on the checklist, if you're following along, I've, I've got the PDF file, like I said before. So I'm just going to be able to talk a little bit better, a little more knowledgeable now. At T one hour. T minus one hour five minutes. We'll do the uh, cabin leak check, and we'll cancel the cancel the master alarm, which is expected. So, here we go. Three minutes. One minute. Challenger, this is on control. Rose, cabin vent. Cabin vent to inhibit. Roger. Okay. So, <clears throat> on left panel number two, which is this one right here. AKA that one down there. This is L1, and that's L2. So L2. Obviously, you can see the green, uh, the yellow arrow. We're gonna do <coughs> cabin vet isolation valve to close because it's open right now. Both of them are open, so we're gonna close. Light control, challenger, cabin pressure down. Over. Flight control, copy that. Cancel the master alarm on F uh, on F6. Which is right there. Again, this is the last time we're doing this che these checks. So from now on, I'm just going to start the, video the, the missions at the launch. Because no one wants to sit here for 30 minutes flipping switches. They want to see the shuttle go up. Alright. So, that's that. At uh, T-51 minus minutes to launch, pilot will confirm IMU alignment. So I'm actually going to go ahead and prep for that. Uh, I'm actually going to throw... I'm going to throw the HUD on so we can see it as we lift off, but yeah, you don't have to. So, F4, so we can be the pilot. Kind of give you a sense of responsibility. Though the pilot has to flip that switch. Well, then there we go. Alright, so we're in the pilot chair. Basically, the commander is in charge of the mission itself. Um, and is actually in charge of flying the spacecraft even though he is the commander and not the pilot itself. But he is, he, he is responsible for uh, flying the ship, landing the ship, so the brakes, the speed brakes, landing your controls, all that stuff is over there. On this panel, I don't know if I've ever talked about this or not, this is all of the cooling and thermal control systems for the shuttle. Uh, the air, the, ca the cabin's air and pressurization, uh, the thermal control systems... Uh, engine cooling and all that nonsense. The pilot, which is an oxymoron, doesn't fly the ship, but is in but is in but is in charge of the APU, the three APUs, the three main engines, right, and then the uh, the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen external tank controls and heaters and all that nonsense over here. That's that. So time warp to 51 T minus. 3, 4, 2, 1. IMU alignment complete. We show 28 degrees, 36 minutes, 30.32 seconds north latitude, and 80 degrees, 36 minutes, 14.88 seconds west longitude. Challenger, over. What the fuck, Challenger? Okay. Next event is uh, in 
30 seconds actually. Uh, confirm boiler power on. Boiler power for the APUs. So I'm actually going to go ahead and get ready. Boiler controls are actually right here. On uh, right panel two, it'll be re these these uh, six switch these uh, these nine switches right here. Five, four, three, two, one. Challenger, confirm boiler pressure on. Roger, pressure on boiler. Power, boiler, N2, power supplies, all three switches to on. We confirm boiler, power on, over. Roger that, Challenger, out. Okay. All right, I'm going to switch back to the pot, the command, the commander. At T minus 45, we're going to open cabin vent. Challenger, this is on control. Over cabin vent, over. Roger, cabin vent. Both these are closed. We're going to open it. Okay, T minus 42 minutes. Uh, we're going to enable backup flight system, BFS. Uh, we're going to execute computer data transfer to BFS, and we're going to copy. Uh, we're going to copy private primary avionics. Um, Systems to ABS or BFS. Basically, we're going to go right here. Yep, down the center. Okay. So, <clears throat> that's the commander. Backup flight system control right here on the center panel. Challenger, flight control, activate backup flight system. Copy. Backup flight system right here. Central controller. Display. Flip it to on. And so we can talk about it right here. <clears throat> this is GPC number one. Uh, as you can see, GPC memory. First program. Uh, we're going to load item 25 execute. Wait. It's right there. There it is. Uh, item 25. See, there's 22, 21, 23, 27. Where's 25? 25. There it is. Transfer, tr transfer the all system programs to the uh, backup flight system. Flight control ops one to BFS complete. Challenger, Okay. So ops one to BFS complete basically takes Ops 1, which is the major program in charge of the first leg of the journey to ascent from liftoff to orbit, it takes that program and writes it into the backup flight system in case the, uh, one of the main GPC computers crashes. I really wish my phone would stop going to sleep, but hey, whatever. T minus 36 minutes 40 seconds. We're going to uh, finish the cabin leak check by closing the vent and opening the isolation vent. No, no, we're not. We're going to continue checking the pressurization of the cabin. We're going to finish cabin leak check. We're not going to finish it, but we're going to come close. <sighs> 36 minutes, 40 seconds. This is off control. Open. Cap and vent. We copy cap and vent to enable. So basically, this was open, this was closed, and then we just flipped them. So we, because we got to make sure the cabin is good to go um, before we lift, before we take off. Actually, we need to come here. We actually need to stay there. Now we get to finish it. 
Uh, T minus 33 minutes, 20 seconds, cabin pressurization complete. Closed cabin vent isolation valve. So it's going to be this switch in two minutes. Flight control challenger, cabin vent, check complete, over. Challenger, please Okay. Cabin is pressurized and good to go with no leaks. Okay. T minus 30 minutes. Load ops one. Plan 10 minute hold time. Load the first stage SW program to the primary avionics system. Right keypad ops one ops 101 pro spec 99 pro and resume. So that's the pilot's job. This actually helps. Challenger, load op one, over. Roger, ops one. Ops one zero one, program. Ops one zero one, complete. Spec ninety nine pro. And resume. I'll just stay in the commander's chair from now on. Makes things a lot simpler. <coughs> I don't get to jump around in jitters. So this is Ops 1. Basically it's your ascent profile program. So since everything is run automatic off the ground computers and from uh, the shuttle's onboard computer, everything is already pre-programmed by NASA. So if you don't trust NASA, then you don't be an astronaut. <laughs> so loading Ops 1 signifies that we are ready to launch. Okay. Um... Hang on. Basically, the commander needs to confirm Ops 1. We confirm. Flight plan loaded into OPS 1. Flight plan is loaded into Ops 1 into BFS. Means the computer is ready to go. <clears throat> All right. T minus 26 minutes. Main propulsion system, all three main shuttle main engines, SSMEs. Two main propulsion power on and helium pressurization. Uh, it'll be here. We'll switch over there so people can actually see what I'm talking about. So, here's your main, uh, here's your main engine power controllers. So, it'll be uh, helium, HE, HE for helium. Helium isolation valves A, switches 1 through 3, left, center, and right, main engine 1, 2, and 3, uh, to power on. For isolations A and B, and pneumatics will be set to open, so flip that one up. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, bam. Challenger, go main propulsion to power on. Challenger. Roger, main propulsion system. Boom. Right? And then main propulsion system, all six engine power switches to on. So engine power on for center, left, and right. Center, left, and right. This is Challenger. We confirm main propulsion system to enable. Copy that, Challenger. Okay. Um... Come here. Last check of the abort advisory system coming up at T minus 15 minutes. And clear caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. T minus 15. So almost everything in this pre launch is, the, is basically the same. Challenger. There's the abort light. Abort advisory channel. Challenger, view caution, warning, memory, verify no unexpected errors. Clear. <coughs> caution and warning memory is clear. No unexpected errors. 
T minus nine minutes, the famous uh, shuttle nine minute hold time. We'll be doing several things. Uh, enable the fuel cells, APU, or uh, main fuel cells. Uh, enable countdown form nine minutes. Start the countdown for the T minus nine, which will be right panel, center panel. Right panel will be. Hey, phone, I'm looking at you, bitch. Ascent checklist. Come on. Brother. Uh, enable fuel cells. Enable countdown timer for nine minutes. Start the countdown timer for nine minute hold time. Uh, ESS bus source. MNBC, MNCA, and MMAB switches to on which is right panel, which would be, yeah, there they are. So, uh, right panel, this will be R1, I believe. Yeah, R R1 panel, so it's right here. Power distribution, ESS bus source, uh, MNBC, MMCA, and MMAB, all switches to on. So those are located right there. Uh, and then countdown timer wheel will be set to nine minutes. We will set the countdown timer. We will count down and we will start it and we will confirm the launch. Challenger, this is on control. Be nice. Nine minutes and hold. Challenger, copy that now. It looks like they want the timer first. So, clock set to nine minutes. We're going to count. I think we're going to count down, right? Set. Yeah, we're going to count down. Uh, uh, event mode, count up, count down, test. So we're going to count down from nine minutes, and we'll flip this up when we want to start it. Are we not going to switch those switches? They all need to be on. Get the counter check. The shot is the launch. Payload manager. Call for launch. Shuttle engineer. Looking good. Weather. We confirm. Call for launch. Seeking mission and insurance. Yeah, go for launch. CDR. Roger. PLT. Copy. MS1. Roger. MS2. Loud and clear. MS3. Loud and clear. There's the countdown timer controller. Thought we were gonna flip those switches. Looks like we're not going to. Next event is APU start, pre-start in eight in one minute. Okay, everybody, pay attention because this is how you start your APUs. APU fuel intake valves one through three, or tank valves, are on close. Go away, fucker. Go for APU, please start. 
Now they want us to trip the sensors. Jeez Louise. There's our bus sources that everybody was yelling at me about. All right. Okay, this is set to close. APU fuel intake center power. Switches to on, one, two, and three. APU pre-star complete. Challenger, wait to stop. For heaven's sakes, you stupid thing. I am live recording, phone. I need you to work. Holy freaking cow. Just let me view the PDF. Jeez Louise. Six minutes to launch and my phone's doing stupid crap. T minus five minutes, ten seconds, we'll go for APU pre start. Master alarm may sound if the APU pressure reaches uh, 3,000 psi. Silence the alarm. APU pre start. APU fuel intake valve. Switches to open. APU selectors to start and run. Hydro main pump presses to normal. <gasps> Hydro circular pumps to off. Challenger, life control. APU, looking good. Over. Challenger, looking good. Okay. L2, Splash Evaporator System Controller, to off. Flash Evaporator Feed Line Heater, supply to off. This is off control. APU, get flight. Roger, life control. Alright. Um, okay. We're almost done with this episode. So, the next thing we're going to do is uh Challenger, initiate, I really have to go to the bathroom T minus two minutes we're going to do AP, AP, uh, APU power inhibit uh, so we're going to inhibit the ability we're going to turn off the ability to auto turn off the APUs which is actually going to be here uh, where is it there it is APU shutdown to inhibit, um, so that we can uh, down a business. Challenger, this is off control. Hydraulic yeah. complete. Challenger, cues to copy that. Go for ET. Challenger, go for. Uh, you are go for. Oh, hang on. Oh, it's the two-minute warning. So it'll be uh, AP. Challenger, go for ET, LO2, pressurization, view caution, warning memory, verify your no unexpected errors, close and lock your visors, and initiate O2 flow. Black control. Challenger, APU, power off. Go ahead. We copy. Light control. And then the main bus sensors, AC, the main AC bus sensors to auto Challenger, to monitor. Visor, we copy. Light control. Close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow. And... Challenger. Clear caution Light warning memory. Go for uh, ET LH2 pressurization. You caution warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. And at T minus one minute, we are going to call it. <sighs> because I really have to take a leak and I don't want to do it on, on the microphone. So.
And that's a wrap, boys. One minute. All right, so we're going to F9, we're going to save. We're going to save. And I'm going to leave. No, and we're going to leave. We're going to leave.